The voices of some of your favorite characters are taking the stage to talk about the movie, the series, and so much more. So put your hands together for your moderator, London Jackson, and Steven Universe. everyone. Wow. <laughs> There's always so many people out here. <laughs> well, hi, I'm London Jackson, and I am your moderator for the Steven Universe panel. I'm assuming everyone's here for Steven Universe, right? <laughs> uh, this is my third year moderating Steven Universe here at LA Comic Con, and these women are so amazing, and I love talking to them. So let's just Bring them out. Let's just start. So our first is Dee Dee Magna Hall, who is the voice of Pearl. Yay! <laughs> we have Michaela Dietz, who is the voice of Amethyst. Dietz! <laughs> Michaela Dietz! Hi! Well, hi! Dee Dee, is that you? It's so nice to see you. It's so nice to meet you. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. We have Shelby Robert, who is the voice of Peridot. Yeah. <laughs> hi. Hi, 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 hi. We hi, have hi, Jennifer hi. Pass, who is the voice of Lapis Lazuli. <laughs> oh, what are you doing? And we have Grace Willick, who is the voice of Connie. I love Connie. <laughs> Do it for you, girl. <laughs> hey. hey. Oh, wow. Hi. So Hi. thank you all for being here on this panel. Thank I absolutely love you for having us. I know. I, I love the show, and I know everyone does too. And looking over the incredible five seasons and even the Steven Universe movie, this show is is amazing because we get to know your characters and the ensemble cast and we just dive into this whole literal universe. Um, can each of you talk about what sets this animated show apart from others that are on right now and why it's, you think it's so special and has such an amazing fan base? Well, one, we're, we're on it. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Sorry, that, was that is true. Um, I love that the show is, uh, can you hear me? Oh, hi, you guys are so beautiful. Hi, I don't even have my glasses on. But um, I love that the show is so musical. Yes, the music's yeah. amazing. Um, I love that this show, uh, I feel like it's so beautifully inclusive and, um, you know, it does it, it's, it's been amazing for representation. I feel like yes. purple, <laughs> purple space rocks have not been represented um, in a lot of mediums. So I'm, I'm really glad that the show exists for that reason. Yes, I second that, Michaela. Um, the representation and the inclusion. What, what other cartoon has ube cakes for Filipinos out there? What? Uh, also, I think um, everybody can find themselves in the show uh, in 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 a in a vast array of characters. Um, I think. Everybody that I've talked to, fans of the shows, people that are brand new to the show, they're always like, I see myself in one or more of the characters. And I don't know if, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I'm biased, though, because we are all on Steven Universe. So I think, I think Steven Universe is the best show ever. Yeah! Woo! <laughs> yes, I, I second, fourth, fifth that. Um, <laughs> And I just also love how these themes just kind of like sneak up on you. Like something just so seemingly like, oh, this is just kind of throwaway stuff, but everything is so meaningful and there's like so much like uh, deep, deep meaning in everything. And it just, it, it just the, the character payoff with, with everyone's story, you just think something is just kind of a throwaway thing, but then there's like so much great payoff. So, mm -hmm. and I just have, I love how that really just sneaks up on you and you're like, wow, this is deep. 
right? Yes, <laughs> yeah. definitely. Piggybacking off of what everyone has said so far, I mean, <laughs> there's just so much love that is put into the show, mm -hmm. and I feel like it's hard to not see that when you're watching it because everyone who works on the show loves what they're doing, and it really shines through when you're watching the show. I also feel like there, there aren't many shows that can uh, show something as terrifying as cat fingers, but then also <laughs> as like heartwarming as, uh, you know, Steven protecting Connie with his shield. So I feel like that it's just a wide range of emotion that um, Rebecca Sugar and the Crooniverse um, are, are able to bring to us, so yeah. Well, speaking of a wide range of emotions, one of the standout moments, particularly in season five, is when we find out the big reveal about Rose Quartz and the fact that she's a uh, big diamond. And Wait, what? <laughs> and I have to say, I had to take Spoiler a personal alert. day because that was, I was blown away by that. Now, I just want to ask, when did you guys find out about it? Was this set in motion from, like, the beginning? Was this just, how did that come to be? Because I didn't see it coming. I don't know if others saw it coming, but that's a really big revelation within the show, and it changed everything for Steven and for your character. So how did you find out about it, and what was your reaction to learning that that's the big secret? <laughs> So uh, we, we record on a Wednesday, typically, and uh, we get the script on a Monday. So it would be the Monday before that Wednesday, I found out. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. yeah oh, wow. I, okay. I, I found out about the whole Pink Diamond everything reveal when you guys did. Um, I don't remember usually what I ate for breakfast the day before. So Same. it's kind of one of those things when I watch the episodes, I don't like to look at Twitter or social media because I don't like to see spoilers. But when I see it, I'm in silence and I'm, <laughs> I'm in awe. Um, so I don't really know. Did any of us know that that was going to happen? I don't think I, so because. I, yeah, I found it all in real time too. And yeah, everyone okay. else oh, wow. was <laughs> tweeting about it. And I would watched it in real time. I was like. Oh my gosh, that's what happened. <laughs> well, did I, I mean, I didn't, I, I found out at a later record because I wasn't on, like recording on the episode where it found out. But it, I think Steven says something to Connie about it. And I remember being in the booth and asking Rebecca, wait, what? Like, <laughs> I, I, and she was like, oh, okay. So, <laughs> and just walked me through it. And I was like, oh. Uh, Oh, oh, okay, okay, I guess it's just time to start working and not process that, like, fully. <laughs> I remember recording separately for some of that episode and watching the, the entire show um, from start to finish in real time was when it, everything sort of synced in for me personally. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm much like, uh, what is that character, Paparicha, Papar... Pa pa you know it, you know it. <laughs> the one that knows things after the fact. That's, that's me in real life. <laughs> I-R-L. <laughs> good, Dee good. Well, Dee you know. is so hip. Yeah. I am so, so hip, Dee Dee. you guys. <laughs> Dee Dee is such a cool mom. <laughs> my, I'm embarrassing mom, my mom. children right now. Do Sorry, it, kids. Mar. Well, in, in that episode, Pearl, it was a really big deal for her because you are so loyal to Rose and the fact that you had to keep this secret, especially from Steven. And I know it was a very emotional episode. Was there anything that when you went in that Monday to find out about it for Wednesday, uh, did you have to prepare kind of how Pearl would react? Like, did you take emotion from somewhere else or... How did you kind of bring out that kind of brilliant performance that you did in the episode? It was a lot. Wow, but it, wow. But you were amazing at oh, it. Oh, well, thank you so much. No. You know, I, that's very nice. Thank, thank you, thank <laughs> you. Th thank you. You're welcome. Um, oh. I, I, you know, what was the question again? Sorry. <laughs> The, the, did I did I have? Didi, basically, how are you so amazing? Yeah. So basically. listen, listen, <laughs> listen, Linda. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I really, I really can't take any cre credit. I mean, it's all Rebecca and and the Crooniverse. I mean, they write such wonderful words and beautiful music and draw beautiful, uh, you know, uh, 
backgrounds and characters and they have so much backstory. All of that is there for me to just dive into, you know? So um, I really rely on the material and the voice direction from uh, Rebecca and her team. And th that's really how I get to any of the places that I go in the show. I don't really feel like I need to go elsewhere to get the emotions. I mean, this show has got enough feels as it is. I mean, can you agree? Hashtag all the feels. Right? All the feels. Definitely. All, every single one of them. So, you know, that's sort of yeah. how, I, how I do the thing. Right. I mean, the show is very much built on emotion and character development. And one of the things that's a major point in the series is the fusion. Mm. And um, at one point, we finally saw Obsidian, who was a mixture of Stephen and Amethyst and, and Pearl and Garnet. So I just wanted to ask, since there are different fusions, what's your favorite fusion, even if it's not with you, but what's your favorite fusion? And kind of what do you think fusion represents in the show, in that universe? What do you think that means to you when fusion happens? I, I, think, um, I think my favorite fusion is smoky quartz. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and, and to me, um, I, I love it because uh, Steven and Amethyst really bond in this very vulnerable time um, and they learn how to depend on each other and uh, I think that's a, a beautiful thing. I don't, I don't really know how to define a fusion. I feel like that's a Rebecca question, um, but I, I love them. I love fusion. <laughs> it's so oh. good. They yeah. are, they're are, so good. Michaela, yeah. what's they're your so favorite? Good. My favorite is Obsidian, for sure. Mm. Because mm. in the movie, when yeah. Obsidian forms, yeah. my mind was blown. Oh, yeah. I was like, <laughs> first of all, when we saw the movie, <laughs> I was with my best friend Luke, and the, well, we're sitting in the front. And I was, the whole time, we're just snapping my fingers so I couldn't make any noise. But all you could hear was me and him go, yes! Yeah, like, yeah. Every yeah. 20 yeah. seconds, I, I was so can, excited. Can and when Obsidian formed, I wanted to stand up, but then it, would, it was going to be really, really not, I mean, it was just be inappropriate, obviously, in a huge theater for me to just, like, stand up. But it was one of those jaw-dropping moments that, like, I got chills. Mm. So Obsidian would be my favorite fusion. However, I think fusions are... It's kind of the unsaid, you know, like when you see, feel energetically with someone or something and, and you know you guys are on the same page or maybe you knew each other in like a separate life mm -hmm. and you come together and it's mm -hmm. like your mind is blown. You, either like you really know somebody mm. or you feel like really attached to something. Like my dog, mm. I feel like if my dog and I fused, I don't know <laughs> what the word would be. Charby. Charby, Char yes, Charby. Charby. But I feel like that's what a fusion is. You, you take two energies and you bring them together and you're stronger together. I don't know, uh, uh, that's yeah. my opinion. <laughs> I'd, I'd love to get... <laughs> thanks, thanks Yay! for that applause, guys. I can't wait to I... see you and your dog feud. <laughs> Hashtag Charby. Charby, Charby. Yes. Charby. Charby. I think my favorite was um, Steg. Oh, in yes. The movie. Oh, that's what yes. I was Greg, Yes, Greg and, and his dad, uh, I, I'm Greg and his dad, Steven and his dad. It was amazing, like, the, I, I I up until that point, I just thought that it was like an experience uh, between I don't know, a particular relationship. And then when I saw that it was a father and son experience, I was like, whoa, this is amazing. I, that, that was one of my favorites, I think, that just really stuck out to me. And Stevani, of course, was my like, when I first yes. saw that happening, I was like, this is the first time we're seeing this kind of thing on, on a cartoon in an animation. This is incredible. And I remember like looking at my son and seeing and you know just looking experiencing it through his eyes and and it's just like a normal fun thing for him. Like, oh yeah. So like every time he sees Garnet, he's like, Mommy, that's you know, she's a fusion of, of Sapphire and Ruby. And he just he understands that kind of experience with, with two people that love each other and share an experience. So I love them all. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I also love Steg. That was an awesome moment for me. But I think one of the things that stood out to me is, I mean, we know that Greg wanted to be able to fruit fuse with Rose Quartz. And so mm -hmm. to be able to see him have that with their son is, is really cool. Mm. Oh, it's like same, 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 same. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like Opal. <laughs> I mean, uh, Opal for Opal. Opal for Opal. Yes. Opal's 
Yes. <laughs> I wish someone would do a Steven Universe Jurassic Park um, crossover and have a Stegosaurus. Oh my. <laughs> Just putting it out there. Wait, but Michaela, would, 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 would um, the, the arms be short or long? All four arms. I don't know. Maybe they're guitars. I don't know, man. Sick. Ooh. Somebody. I don't know. Fan art. Yeah, fan art. Please. With sharp teeth. <laughs> someone get on it. <laughs> Okay, well, since you guys mentioned Steven Universe, the movie, I, first of all, love the soundtrack. I listen to it on a loop. <laughs> I do. Um, is there a particular song from that, or just the entire series that has stood out to you the most or is your favorite? Mm, since I music mean, is such a big deal for the wow. show. Wow. Um, Other Friends as yes. well. On yeah. heavy rotation yes. in my house. Same. <laughs> Give it up for Sarah Styles. Yeah. Yeah. Sarah Styles. <laughs> I love the kind of beat swing sound it has. It's like electro pop yeah. swing. I don't know. It's good. Whatever. Oh, the reboot song? No, the, oh. the, it's still other friends. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I really like Drift Away. Because mm. um, that moment for me when watching the movie, I really saw Spinell's uh, character arc, and it was so tragic. I'm like, I totally get get you, Spinell. Why you're like that? You were left for how many years? Six hundred, six hundred thousand? Over six thousand years. Six hundred thousand, right? That's a yeah. long something, time. Something. Yeah. And I, it was just so beautiful. Her voice, the way Sarah Styles oh. sung that, and and um, the lyrics of it. Um, I think for me, I was like, this is something really special when I heard "Drift Away," and and I under, we we all understood why Spinell is the way she is, and why she treats Stephen the way she does, and it's. I, I think it was really earned that moment of the heart turning upside down and mm. her lashes, you know, cr she's crying. It was just, it's just genius. 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 I, I agree. I think that um, some, some tracks that I love that uh, we don't often talk about are uh, all the instrumentals that Ivy and Sarashu create. Ooh, yeah, for sure. Um, and I think throughout the series, and certainly in the movie, these tracks really enhance the mood and the feeling, but without overpowering each moment. And I mean, talk about genius. Ivy and Sarashu are, yeah. whew, they, ma they make me mm. feel things, you guys. Mm. I second yep. that. My, my, my friend told me, um, she was wa listening to the soundtrack at her house. I, she's here with her kids too. And uh, she was say, hi guys! Baby bears. Um, I was telling me that she was um, uh, listening to the soundtrack, and in all of the little intervals between the mute, the mm. songs and the uh, every song, they, the the uh, instrumentals, mm. her kids were gonna were telling her what was happening during that time during the movie, like all the scenes that were happening in, in between, which I thought was really kind of cool. You know, that they could hear Julian, that. Julian does that too. Cool. He'll yeah. narrate the, what's what happening with, yeah, during the instrumental yeah. break. He's like, oh, this is, when, this is when Steven goes into Lion. And I'm yeah, like, you're cool. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he just knows. Cool. Yeah. I love it. Love but it. My, my, one of my favorite songs, I love all the songs, but one of my favorite songs is, is your song. With, with Zach. With Zach. <gasps> Oh, that's what uh, makes yeah. me cry. Shout out to Zach. Oh, Live this life. Yeah. Miss, miss my Zachy. Oh. <laughs> no matter what. Yeah, no matter what. That was so fun to record. Because um, I just got to be in the booth with Zach and like try to do whatever he did. It was great. <laughs> yeah. It was so sweet. I love it. Um, well, before I believe we can ask the audience a couple of questions, um, I just wanted to quickly ask if you found someone who has never seen Steven Universe before, and they're like, what one episode should I check out? Mm. What episode would you recommend? Oh God, that's mm. hard. I think watch the movie. Mm. Yeah, I would yeah. say that too. Yeah. That's a, mm. uh, maybe Mr. Greg would be a fun oh, one. Yeah. That's a good one. There's just so much that I don't think one episode, one 11 minute episode, yeah. does it justice. Or even if you watch the uh, 42 minute one, the finale, mm. or like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. the finale of, episode, of the last season. I would say the movie, just go straight for that 62, yeah. 64 minutes. Yeah. Why not? It's and a then good go like back Cliff's and you... Notes version of everything, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, the movie. Yeah. <laughs> so watch the movie. If watch you the movie. It. <laughs> watch the, the movie first and then go back and watch the entire series. There you go. <laughs> or the, just the Uncle Grandpa crossover. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> just just watch that one. It's a great standalone. <laughs> totally canon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, I think um, we have we can have a couple people ask questions. Um, By the way, the cosplay I is 
You guys are coming strong. Luke, Thank you. Steven. Hi. Do they have microphones? I, I think they're going to give a mic. We need and to like do a, a group oh. selfie. Oh, yeah. No. I want to take a Can I hold it? Is that allowed? <laughs> sure. Okay. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, my question is, uh, the music over this show has changed so much since the first season. How has that played into your character's arc, or how has it just kind of affected you outside of the booth? Hmm. Hmm. That is a Rebecca question. No? Rebecca question, right? <laughs> um, I'm sure it plays a lot. I, I, I've heard Rebecca say in certain interviews that um, when, when, when something can't be said, that's when it's put into song and dance. Mm. Um, and so there are these really great kind of indescribable feelings or, you know, things happening be between two people or maybe within oneself. Um, and, and she's trying to do that through the music. I think once I heard that quote from her, I realized like every, I tried to kind of dig deeper um, in the lyrics and levels of every song and just see what the, what, what it was that they were trying so hard to say, especially like with your song and Mr. Greg. And also, it's like, over. Yeah. also, like, d the different characters are marked by different specific instruments, right? Mm. They all have, yeah. like, a, I, I know, like, it's called, like, like Lapis has a particular piano sound and drums. Pearl is a violin. Pearl, yeah. yeah. So those are very, they inform a lot of the emotion with, with uh, very, very specific instruments and percussion that mark the emotion of these characters. So it's kind of all just written yeah. for us and we just have to show up, right? Because yeah. the, sh the writing is so brilliant from the music, like you were saying, Luke. Michaela, to, you know, to the animation, everything is just kind of laid out for us. But I love how the instruments sort of mark our emotional journey. Mm -hmm. What's Peridot's instrument? <laughs> there was like a whole chart, I remember, yeah, it's right? It's in your, it's yours in is like a book. kazoo and mine's an ear. Wait, I think I have it. Love it. I think we can I look have it up. It. Hold on. Google exists. I'm gonna I'm gonna Google this. Okay. <laughs> Stay on. Thank Carry you. On. Great question. It was a great question. Okay, I think we have time for one more. Uh, uh, you in the front, yes. Yes. Hi. First of all, I love you guys so much. Um, I I'm a teacher and I talk to my kids about you guys all the time and they're just super excited to so hopefully I can get some signatures for my um, students. Oh, but nice. um, I was wondering, uh, what was your favorite episode to record and why? <sighs> oh. I know, these are hard because I, I have so many favorites, but, but Mr. <laughs> Greg is one of my favorites because I just loved that the entire show was, pretty much the entire show was musical. So I love that about it. Uh, I, I think for me it might be open book when Connie is talking about her favorite book series and also when we go into Rose's room and I get to be mm. uh, two different versions of myself. One uh, evil, or not evil, but get, gets a little out of hand. <laughs> I, I loved um, Alone at Sea. That mm. was a good one for, for Lapis because you really see how she finally stood up to uh, Jasper and uh, for them to have tackled that kind of, um, you know, subject matter uh, was, I thought, was so brave. And I, I get a lot of people, uh, you know, connecting with that storyline and how they handled, um, you know, that kind of toxic relationship and, and standing up to somebody that, uh, you know, was so toxic. So I, I just thought that was amazing um, art for, for Lapis. And that was a really fun one to record, too. Uh, my favorite was Kindergarten Kid, because uh, growing up, I loved Looney Tunes and Beavis and Butthead and Rugrats and all these, um, you know, old school cartoons. So a recording Kindergarten Kid for me was uh, an, an opportunity to bring in my physicality, because it wasn't a lot of dialogue. It was more um, sound effects, like uh, uh, a lot of like, uh, like screams. Uh, so that was a dream come true for me. So that, that's an episode that is really special to me because um, <laughs> film is forever. And it's an episode where I'm like, look how many grunts I did in 11 minutes. And uh, yeah, it's just like an, you know, it's a throwback and a, and a nod to old school cartoons that I, I love so much. That's so funny because my favorite was Back to the Kindergarten. Just so, <laughs> because I... <laughs> I just love when I'm in the booth with Shelby, and she just has to be like, <laughs> it just was 
a funny, I don't know. When I'm out of the bathtub, right? Yeah, you're like, you're come like, on, let's go. And I'm like, mm. you're just like playing country music tunes. Yes. Cool, man. <laughs> I also love when we're all in the room together because yes. then we can mm -hmm. kind of feed off of each other's energy and um, make effort sounds together in a row. <laughs> yeah. And we have to stay quiet when other people right. are doing their, yeah. their, you know, their tracks and we're like... Yeah. And not uh, laugh. Yeah. Right? We have yeah. to try really hard to not ruin each other's takes when we right. have a funny read. <laughs> and I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish we had more time. I honestly oh. do. But oh. we are at the end of... Uh, the panel, oh. and I wanted to thank all of you for coming up and talking to us about the show. It's amazing, and we can't wait Yay. for what's next. Yeah. So I just wanted to say thank you. Yeah, you guys thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank, thank you. thank you so much for having us. And thank you, London, for having us. Thank you. Thank you, London. Enjoy the movie if you haven't watched it. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> I can't believe we've come so far. Steven Universe Future, here we are. Steven Universe Future. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. you. What? <laughs>